I want to thank um, the organizers of the program for recognizing the International Year of Light. You know, um, many of us see the world through this narrow prism of light, the visible light. We make our judgments based on what somebody is wearing today. Unfortunately, nobody is wearing a tie here, so we can't make judgment based on that. But a lot of decisions are made within this small narrow win of window of light, the visible light. But we know, as you just heard, and many other instances, um, there is more to light than visible, ray, uh, visible light. If you look at the electromagnetic spectrum of light, we see quite a lot of things that light can do, as you had earlier on. Light can be used to power our homes. It can be used to create food. It can be used to cure diseases. And so why is it that we are just limited to this small window of light and then see the world through the prism of visible light? So if you just take a moment and imagine that if light is shown outside that visible range, all of a sudden is darkness, and we see nothing. And what do you do when you want to sleep? What do we normally do? We close our eyes. So sometimes too much of a good thing is not that good because we want to shut off the light. And while we are sleeping, though, our companion is watching. <laughs> okay? The cats can see through the night. So they have the advantage that during the day, they can see everything. At night, they also have the added advantage of seeing through the night. And so, and, and they ask simple questions, by the way. Are you food, friend, or foe? And that's it. All those three F words are used to make those decisions for this small cat. And for us, because we are unable to see through the dark, We've come up with methods to enhance our vision in the dark. And as you must have known today, the hunters, for example, they use night vision goggles to hunt at night. The military has this tech tactical advantage of fighting at night so that you can clearly see your enemies. And those are very important. For us then, what, who is our enemy? In research, our enemy is cancer. And cancer is like, that guest that comes into your home, and be, by the way, you did not invite them, goes into your guest room, take over the whole guest room, your living room, and your bedroom, and all of a sudden you have no place to stay. And that's how fast they grow within a short time, and they take over the whole environment. The problem is that we detect cancer very late. If it were possible to see them at early stages, where they are just a few cells or manageable number of cells, then they are curable. It's easy to treat cancer at early stages. And so there are many technological advances trying to accomplish that today. But while we are there, this is the problem. You go to look at physical because you have symptoms, and all of a sudden, the patient is diagnosed with cancer. So at this stage, there are very limited options, treatment options available to the patient. One of those is surgery. Surgery is the primary treatment option for most solid tumors today. And because the cancerous uh, tumor cells, are, uh, the tumor tissue is large, it's very easy to see them with the technologies we have, such as the magnetic resonance imaging, computer tomography that uses x-rays, ultrasound, nuclear imaging methods, and they will appear clearly. The only way you can diagnose them is to say there's something abnormal in this part of the body. It shouldn't be there. And once the patient is opened up, sometimes it's easy to see. Your surgeon can use their vision, palpation, and other senses to know where the tumor is. But in the operating room, you do not have the advantage of seeing the tumor clearly as it were before the operating room, before you went in there. All of a sudden, the, sur the, the surgeon is operating in the dark. It's even more complicated when you have, the tumors are not like tennis balls that you can easily take out. Sometimes they merge into the normal tissue, as you can see here. This is a patient, a liver cancer patient, 
And the question you are asking is, where is the tumor? Remember, the organ is very large. Where do I start? And so that's one of the questions you are seeing. Yeah, I can see somewhat before surgery, but this is what the tissue really looks like. The next problem we have faced is, well, I've removed the tumor, uh, the tumor tissue, but did I get out everything? Right now, there's no way of knowing that if you've removed all the cancer cells that are present, and we see the relapse of cancer only after a few months, just because we have residual cancer cells left. Where is the tumor margin? Is the lymph node positive? In the case of breast cancer today, breast conserving can uh, surgery, about 25% of patients, even in best hospitals, come back for second surgeries because the margin is positive. There's cancer cells left behind. You can imagine all the troubles that you have to go, the anxiety, just to know, have they taken out all the cancer cells? So the bottom line then is that what we have today is primarily based on who you can afford. How experienced is the surgeon? What's the surgical team like? Have they done this several times? Do they know really where the tumor is? So the outcome is dependent on the experience and expertise of your surgeon. Our goal is to take away that subjective decision and make it more objective in the surgery room. And to accomplish that, we have three targets. One is to be able to tie cancer in such a way that it cannot hide anywhere in the body. Second one is to provide a mechanism to visualize them in real time during surgery so that you don't send the tissue to the pathologist and they make determination of if it's cancer or not, and then you come back and continue the surgery. And finally, we want to be able to eradicate them with high specificity. So this is where that dark light comes into play. If for a minute that we shut off all the lights in this room, and there's pitch darkness, and somebody flickers, there's a flicker of lights in the room. All the eyes will turn towards that light, isn't it? It's a natural reaction. And that light will be so bright that you can't miss it wherever it's coming from. Now, question we ask is, can we turn the whole body to become dark, dark light, such that if there's cancer cells, we make them selectively light up in the dark like a Christmas tree. That's what we did. We looked at different ways of accomplishing this. We went to the near infrared region of light where we know that the human eyes will not see, so we do not want to obstruct the surgeon in what they are doing naturally. But instead enhance, augment their vision in a way that they can see that light, light that cancer cells lighting up in the dark. To accomplish that, we developed, discovered a small molecule that selectively binds to cancer cells, emit light in the near infrared region where you cannot see with your naked eyes. And this is an example of what you see. Here is a mouse that has tumors, uh, tumors growing everywhere. It's called spontaneous tumors, just like in a human being. And you inject this small molecule, and you ask, where is the tumor here? Once we turn on the near infrared light, you cannot see the body, but you can clearly identify where they are lighting up and you know that they are cancer cells. Now that we've accomplished that, we ask the next question, how then do we help the surgeon see in the operating room, since our human eyes cannot visualize the infrared light? And you know it's crowded in there. The last thing you want to do is to wheel in another huge object or device into the surgical room. So instead, we asked ourselves the question, how can we develop a system that has the minimum footprint in the surgical room in such a way that it can be used with no uh, 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 complication? So we came up with a goggle system device. Of course, I showed you a picture of the military using night vision goggles to see in the dark. And we found a way of turning the whole normal tissue into a dark object such that we can see clearly the light that emerges from cancer cells. And so, there are three models to this. An illumination source where we can then deliver this light in the near infrared region, invisible to everybody in the surgical room, in the operating room. A processor system that can really capture the source of light and transmit directly into the surgeon's vision where the light is coming from. And then the tools that can help us visualize and survey the surgical bed after surgery to make sure that everything is taken out. 
And then we take all that huge instrument and condense them into a small piece of information, a device that can be worn by surgeons. And this is what you see. We have different versions of, of this. And the first version was developed by one of my students who had to wear it to show that it works because it was so bad that no surgeon would want to wear it. Um, and you know, one of the things that we experience is that we, we designed it such that the near infrared goggle will be on one eye and the surgeon can use the other eye to visualize the patient. Guess what? When we went to the operating room, the surgeon said, what were you thinking? How will I be looking at one eye with one thing and the other one with another thing? So we combined them, the binocular systems, to the point that we thought, OK, we figured it out. We have this nice video stream in real time, color and near infrared light imposed. And the surgeon, the open surgeon said, you know what? I still want to see what I'm doing. I don't want to rely on your technology. So we had to move further to then give them, this allows us to use the eye as our camera to see what we normally see. And then encode the near infrared light into their sight of vision so that now they are not losing track of what they normally do. But now we've enhanced the opportunity for them to see cancer. This is one example of a breast cancer patient, and where you are looking at where is the tumor, or where is this positive lymph node, can I see it in real time and remove them correctly? Or you go to the other place where you say, now that I've taken the tissues out without the goggles, can I make sure that there's no tumor left behind at the edges? And this is one patient that could have been recalled, and right in the operating room, it was determined that there are still positive cells left behind, and if you go back to the axillary of the patient, you can see that things are still lighting up there. And the surgeon can make that instant decision in the operating room instead of waiting for weeks before you come back and determine that. More importantly, we can transmit this to every part in the world. And actually, in developing countries, this is huge. They have no imaging devices or experts in different areas. And now experts anywhere in the world can guide them because you can see what they are seeing in real time and be able to present, guide them. Also, we find out that um, in the case of these liver cancer patients, this is what would have been removed. But when you use the goggle and survey around the tumor, you say, OK, this is why this patient will be coming back in two months' time. There are also cancer cells that would have been left behind. So basically, what we've done is that we can now be able to tie cancer. We can visualize them. We can remove them. We are now trying to turn the light to a different wavelength such that we can kill them selectively wherever they are. We don't need to see them. And for that, we, we had to call on our dear friends, uh, the mantis shrimps. And um, either you talked about animals seen in the, in the dark, under the sea. This is one of them. It uses UV light, the light. The eyes are designed in a way that they can capture this low radiation and then convert it accurately into a visible light for them to see their food down, down under. And so we are now using the same mechanism to come up with materials that can generate this light inside cancer cells that becomes toxic and eradicate them. So we are working in the dark so that we can see the light. We work in the dark so that the cancer cells can become very clear to the surgeon. Therefore, there is no darkness, in fact, unless you can see the light. Thank you. <laughs>